all right so welcome back again my name is jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial we're trying to see how to embed a test editor inside html and then inside a flux app right so how do you do something like this so if i come back to this app i can actually move it up and i can add some more stuff here right so, so how do you build something like this so we'll be trying to use the same idea to build something like this into building a very simple sql playground in which i can paste in a code here so something like this to so select or from city limits let's say three and if i click on the run it's going to run this query and then it's going to generate a result so how do you embed a test editor inside a flux app right so let's see how to do that so there are a lot of tools that allows you to be able to do that so one of them is code mirror right so code mirror js allows you to be able to do some very cool stuff with a very small amount of code so the first thing you need is go to codemirror.net and then click on the download button so click on this to download the zip file right and then you'll be extracting this file to include it into our flux app so let's go back again to our workspace so i'll go back to my workspace I'm going to go into my working directory which is this place so let's get that from here and then make a directory and let's call that my my flux editor right Something like that so move it to my flux editor there's nothing here as you can see i'm going to create my files after the file i'm going to create my directory for my templates because it's flux and then another one for my static folder right static so if I go back again and I check it out, you can see that we have these three files. Now let's open it with Sublime and then let's start writing some code. So as I said, we need a code mirror. So I'll go back again to the templates folder or to the static folder and then paste in the code mirror. So I'm going to extract this thing that I downloaded here into my static folder. So I'll come back again to my static folder and I'm going to paste it here, right? So I'm copying the code mirror. I've extracted it. I'm copying everything there, right? Very nice. That is the first one. So let's go back to our test editor itself, the flux part. And on our test editor work area, I'm going to create my first flux app, right? So I'll paste the code save us time. So this is from flux. We are going to import flux render template. We're going to initialize our app. Then we're going to create our first route, right? And then we're also going to create a simple processing route. Very simple. These are very busy stuff, right? Okay, so I'll go back again to my template. I need to create this in this .html file. So let's create it to so save into my template folder. I'm going to create my index.html file. So index.html file. This is going to be where I'll be placing in my code. So let's write a simple HTML and let's put as my flux editor, something like that. And then let's come back again here. So I'll create my div, then let's create our form. So inside the form, the most important thing we need is our test area. And then the test area is going to take in a name. So this is the name that is going to be, whatever I'm going to be typed inside, typing inside my test area is going to be attached to this name. So let's call it as raw data. And then it needs another argument ID, right? So I'll call it as editor. This is very, very important, right? Perfect. Now let's create another button. So let's create a simple button of type submit. Let's call that, let's say run the code. Very simple. So that is all that we need. Now let's create a simple line, HR, and let's bring the result here. So, so the result is going to be the raw data. Right? So if I type in something, it's going to be attached to this particular name variable. Yeah. And then it's going to be sent to the backend. So let's give it the backend. So method is going to be post. And then the action is going to be the route which I'm posting to, which is going to be my process. So this process route is referring to this particular route here. So if the method is post, I want you to pick that particular, go to the form, pick the raw data, which is coming from this raw form here. So pick the form, pick this raw data, and then you set that result here, right? That is the bit you can understand. So the result raw data is going to be sent back again to our app. Very simple. So let's run this simple app we have done and see whether it's working as expected. I'll go back again and let's run it. So the address is already in use because of the demo I showed previously. So let me close this one off. And then let's 
run it again perfect so let's run it so i'll come back again copy this link come back and let's check it out perfect so the app is working as expected as you could see right but the test editor is not showing so how do you work with the test editor so this is where we'll be using the javascript that we imported right so i'll go back again so code mirror makes it very very easy for you to do any of these things so what we need is that we need to go into our static folder here right and then import some stuff so what we need to import that you need to import from the library so the code mirror library we need a code mirror css and code mirror gss js right so i'll come back here and first of all let's get the css so it's going to be url4 into my static folder into my stack is static folder so go into my static folder then pick the file name named as my code mirror right go into that particular code mirror then pick the library and then pick the code mirror css right so this is referring to here so let me make it better so go to the static go to the code mirror pick the library inside the library for that there's a code mirror css that's what you are picking right very interesting that is the first thing then you also need to get for the script itself the javascript so you going to be the script script source yep so this is going to be the same thing we did above so i'll copy this and then i'm going to paste it here so this time it's not going to be the css by the javascript but these are the most important things these are the two important things we need right the css and then the javascript now we need to add some teams to it so let's add a team so to add a team the team is also going to be a css so let me copy this to save us time so the team if you go back again to our folder we have the static folder like the mirror inside we have add-ons so you can add several add-ons which we'll be checking it out later we also have the library the most important thing we have the mode the mode represent all the lang languages we'll be using so from apl to z z lang whatever the language is <laughs> there's python there's SML, and then there is also for the teams right different teams so we'll be picking one of the teams so let's pick a simple team so i'll change it from here to pick a team go back and call that team then let's pick a simple team let's use the mono kai team right perfect then let's also specify the language you want to support so the language is going to be a script just as we had above so source then it's going to be the same thing we did above here so the language this time we will pick in a simple language perfect so let's pick the language so to pick the language go to the mode folder and then you pick the language so first let's go back again to the mode folder the mode then the language so let's use the language sml for sml for now or html then sml dot js so let's take off this so let's save it so perfect so the most important you need is this two ones very important then the particular team you want to use and the particular language you want to support so let's go back again and see how it works so to link it together i just come down here and create my javascript to link it together so javascript then i'm going to create a variable call editor and then i'm going to pick up some stuff so using code mirror so i'm going to call the code mirror function so this code mirror class is coming from the javascript library here right perfect so code mirror from test area and i'm going to this picks two arguments i'm going to pick the id which is this particular id here where it is attached to the target and then the configuration so the first one is going to be the id so document you can use jquery to get it anyway get elements by id i'm picking the id called editor perfect that is the first one the next one is the configuration so the configuration is going to go with this option it's going to go with the mode which is the language so let's use sml 
Isabel. Perfect. And then let's specify the team. So the team is going to be my Monokai. Monokai team. Right. And it's all. So sometimes it's better you make it like this way. Yeah. So that it looks nicer. Okay. Perfect. So that is all that we need. So we are just specifying the mode and then the team. Right. So we also we have to make sure that anytime you are specifying there, you are also importing it. We're importing the mode here. It's supposed to be that yes. And then the team, right? Which is here. So let's save it and let's see our result. So I come back, refresh the flux up. It's giving us an error because of the ginger. So got string expected and yeah, because of the formatting. So let's fix it. So the reason the error was there was because of this place, right? We forgot to put the forgot to close it. Right? That's why it was given that error. So let's refresh it. Voila, right? See so that now we have gotten our team, right? Perfect. So I can now paste in any HTML. So, so if I go back and I, let's say put in an h2 tag. Hello. H3, H2, yeah. close it. H to perfect right so if i click on the run then now it has brought the result here right very cool so that is the basic understanding so what allowed this editor to happen was this id which we are attaching to code mirror right very nice but it's interesting that as you can see from our normal test editor we have some numbers here so how do you add numbers to it so i'll go back again and i'll add the numbers to add numbers just go back again and specify that you want to add some line numbers to it so this is going to be line numbers you set it to true right so if i go back again and then I come back to the app itself let's refresh it if i type inside the automatically there is a number here right just as we have numbers here so i can type in something so h2 hello world h2 right and i come back here see automatically giving us another one so p tag it works p tag but we also need some auto completion right so how do you add auto completion to it so you can also come down here and specify that one you can specify that, okay i also need auto close so auto close so auto close tax say so that one to true and then auto close bracket say so that one to also true so if you are importing these ones are add-ons you must import them so I'll go back again to the top of my file and import this particular JavaScript add-ons, right? So copy this one too. So we need one for the add-ons are found inside the add-on folder. Inside my add-on, you have my edits, and you have my close brackets, and we have the close tags, right? So this is going to help us with auto completion. So I'll change this one from here to add-on. So add-on. Inside my add-on, we have my edits. Then we here we have the remaining ones right so we have the close bracket dot js and then close bracket dot js which is referring to these add-ons here so close bracket and close tag right perfect so let's save it now, the moment I save it and I come back to the app, so let's refresh the app. So let's go back again. So I click on H2. So that now automatically it came, right? So hello. And let's try again. So P tag. Perfect. It works. Very cool. So I can click on run. And we see the result here. So how do you render this one? So to render this ones, this is where you're going to be working either on your back end or your front end. So in case I want to render this one as HTML, I can just come back again. Flux makes it very easy. I'll specify that okay, render it with a safe option. Right. So now if I copy the same thing that we have here, paste it back here, see what I did. <laughs> copy this, paste it here. And run it now it's going to render it perfectly well as you could see very nice so that is how to 
embed your test editor, right? A test editor inside Flux, very, very simple, right? All of them using code mirror behind the scene. If I right click and I check inspect, you're going to be seeing it behind the scene that is using code mirror behind the scene. So, so go back again. You can see that it's using code mirror, code mirror, right? Very cool. That is how to work with it. So the basic idea is that first of all, you just need to import the packages, right? Or import them to your Flux app, whatever you want to add to it. Then in case you want to change the, t the language, you just specify the language here. And then the team, in case you want to change it. So in case I want to use material, I just go back to material. And I have to also change it here, right? Let's say change the team also here. So that it corresponds to material. So I save it and I come back and I refresh. Now the team is now going to be material design team, right? That is the big understanding. In case you also want to change the language, the language is mode, right? So language is mode, the team is team, and you can also add some very cool stuff to it. Okay. So thank you for watching this tutorial. See you in the next session. Stay blessed. And then for the processing, we just use the normal flux processing aspect, right? This is the raw data, right? Very cool. So thank you for watching this tutorial. In case you have any question or contribution, you can just put in the comment section below. So the next thing that you have to be thinking about is how do you keep the result here, right? So that you can keep on editing. That is something we try to see how to do that in the future. See you another time. If you have any ideas of how to do that, let us know in the comment section below. See you another time.